In today's video, we're going to use the volatility we saw inside of the NASDAQ, and I'll use that to help illustrate the differences between the futures volatility box applied on the NQ futures with the stock volatility box applied on the QQQ ETF. We're looking at the same exact setup. This is the sell-off that took place towards the tail end of the lunchtime hour. And as that hour ended and the next hour began, we saw momentum kick into gear inside of the NASDAQ market. Now let's start first with the futures volatility box. As we go through this, I'll highlight some of the differences between the two different models we have available to us. So with the NQ futures, or rather the futures volatility box, we look at 10 different futures markets and we have five different volatility models available for those 10 markets. These markets include the index market, so all four of the indices, the S&P, Dow, NASDAQ, Russell, includes the 30-year note, uh, includes energies, includes metals. Now, with the five models, our goal here is to be able to adapt to most volatility conditions that we see inside of these 10 markets. It allows us to have more trade setups because we have models like the scalper designed specifically to scalp in and out of, say, futures markets. Those points really start to add up and that's where we have the luxury here of things like the scalper models. Now, if you focus primarily on the index markets, I think you'd find a little bit more value in the futures volatility box, given that you have five different volatility models to pick and choose from based off of our stock models where we have two, the aggressive and the conservative. So this might be a good segue to first show you what the stock models look like, and then we'll review both charts so you can see how that played out today. Now at the QQQ ETF, we have both hourly and daily volatility models available for all stocks and ETFs we look at. And there's 10,000 plus stocks and ETFs that we look at here. So the universe of stocks is much bigger and that's why we can get away with two models since that still gives us plenty of opportunities. In fact, we have a custom live scanner that we've built for all of these stocks and ETFs to make that job a little easier. And there you can find where say QQQ currently set up today. We had the aggressive long. You'll notice you also had XLK. You also had stocks you could pick and choose from. Netflix, VMware, you had Microsoft, you had Meta, you had TQQQ. You had uh, sector ETFs like XLY, XLK, XLC. So you have a lot of different stocks that you can pick and choose from when that same volatility is taking place like the one that we saw inside of the NQ futures. The key difference here is with the two models, you need to be a little bit more patient and wait for these breaches. The futures markets will trigger a lot more setups compared to say the stock markets on a particular ticker. Now today, if we take a look at the NQ futures, here what we can see is inside of the NASDAQ futures, price went outside of even our doomsday conservative models. To help give you context, this doesn't happen very frequently. So whenever we do break outside of these clouds, that's our very clear sign that, hey, the volatility inside of the NASDAQ is way more than we can contain with even our most conservative volatility model. This is our clear cut sign to sit out of this particular market. Now, the benefit here is you have other index markets available to you. So for example, this is what the S&P 500 looks like here, where you can see the doomsday conservative models. It still held price action that we saw inside of the S&P 500. Now, if we compare this to the QQQ now, the QQQ, we can see we breached our aggressive hourly volatility box models. And we even started to get close to breaching our conservative hourly volatility box models, but we fell a little bit short of the clouds. So the two sets of models we had available to us here did a pretty good job of containing price action inside of the QQQ ETF. If you've been following along with that momentum reversal setup that we've been discussing at great lengths, we even had that set up today here. We had way more than the five Keltner channel wedges. We had the edge signal confirmation, which overlapped with the momentum cross. And we had very clearly breached our aggressive volatility box clouds. And we still had the conservative ones down here available to us. With the cues at the same time, like I said, you had other symbols also available to trade. You had Microsoft, this is what Microsoft looked like. You had some sector ETS. We looked at XLK, we had XLC, we had XLY. 
So you had a lot that you could pick and choose from, and you could also use the volatility box clouds to measure which one was, say, more extended compared to something like, say, the SPY, which was the least extended out of all the markets that we just saw. So hopefully through this video, you've been able to understand, first off, the difference between the futures and stock volatility box models. With the futures models, we have five different sets of models available to us. We look at 10 markets instead of the 10,000 that we look at with the stocks and ETF models. With the stock and ETF models, you do have the luxury of a live scanner that goes and finds these setups for you. However, the key thing is you need to be a little bit more patient. If you trade only, say, the index markets, today we did have setups, but typically you'll find that the futures volatility box will give you setups, whereas, say, the stock may not have yet breached our models for the QQQ. So you have to pick and choose based off of the asset class that you like to trade, but hopefully this video helps to illustrate those differences. You saw how price action panned out in a variety of different markets, so that also helps give you a visual clue of how the models look on your chart. The last thing I'll end this video with that I did not show you yet is the daily models, and you can see the daily models printed here on the SPY chart as well, and how the S&P did not get anywhere close to the daily model breaches today. The daily models, when they do happen, are some nice breaches to take advantage of. And again, the live scanner will tell you exactly where we are seeing daily volatility box breaches. This will happen far less frequently inside of the major index markets. And when we do see any one of those ETFs, that's usually our sign to jump all over that setup. All right, I hope you found this video useful in understanding the differences between the futures and stock volatility box models. Take care, everyone. Good luck trading, and I'll see you in the next update.